Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, for the invitation to be here together with Zoya and Sara uh, there. That is not here, but uh, help a lot with the session. And uh, I will present some results, uh, trace elements, chromites, and uh, following a little bit what uh, uh, Sara Jen uh, just uh, presented. But actually, the, the full bulk of results are, were not ready for the conference. So I will call preliminary results for now. And we will start very fast um, uh, showing a little bit about this complex in Brazil. The name is Jacurici. It's the largest chromite deposit. It's a very important one for Brazil. And the problem is that we have a very huge uh, amount of chromium in a single layer, massive. We have other layers I will show, but uh, this one is the, the mining one. And it's very difficult to explain the thickness because it's just a three meter, 300 meter thick uh, seal. And so uh, we need a large volume of magma. I, I worked here a long time ago together with other colleagues in Brazil. And the, the, um, the complex is along uh, this belt. Is a very, um, is a, I believe this is an elongate. Now is segmented by tectonic. The age is about 2.1 giga years. And it's important that it's intruded in a, a sequence of a greenstone belt with marbles in the roof. Um, the Jacurici complex is partially deformed and metamorphosed as most uh, rocks in Brazil, unfortunately, but the magmatic textures and composition are preserved in many areas along the belt. <clears throat> Here is some previous results, it's all, all published, but um, it's important to say that uh, when we studied that, uh, we saw that the lower unit that we call lower zone here and the upper zone here, we have a fast, um, fast sorry, an increase in, in magnesium near to the main MCL, that is the main chromite layer. And so after that, we have uh, another behavior. And so a fractionated to mafic zone that is just a little in the top. No plagioclad at all in any rocks here, even uh, neither in interclumulus, no plagioclase. And the other thing we did was working with some isotopes. And so we saw that probably the, the source would be the uh, mantle lithosphere and with some adding some crust. But this addition of crust, we believe that occur exactly in the moment where the chromatite has formed. We consider uh, in 2003, this as a conduit like, because it's uh, to explain the, uh, the, um, this amount of chromite is an open system, and we there is no other explanation for us uh, but a seal-like um, conduit. And here is just showing that the the shift in the isotopes that justify the the crystal contamination, as well as the very important the addition of water. Uh, I emphasize that in two. 2003, and but in that time contamination was not very considered. But uh, I believe uh, the the water here plays an important role in this complex, and the amphibole mode increased dramatically in the top. Um, however, it's very ex difficult to explain the mechanism to explain the the thickness of the chromite, independent of what uh, magma modeling. Um, so we know everybody, I think, you know, and yesterday we talked a lot about that, the in situ and, and slurries and other ideas. And so we look at further for the chromites, textures and uh, composition. Uh, just to say that the, the Jacurici goes around this belt. And so we, we, we studied here in the middle, the result from here is not yet ready, but we are focused on the main chromatite layer and some uh, minor chromatite, minor is not minor, are meter thick chromatite with uh, four to six to percent of chromium. But the, the mine only is concerned in, in this area because it's five to eight meters thick. So why to mine in this one? And so, yeah, this is massive. And there is another minor um, disseminated chromatites in the top. So it's like this, this textures. And that's uh, is important to say that the composition uh, we the, the 
the trends that we see in the composition of orthopyroxine and olivine uh, is almost constant uh, uh, below and, and shift uh, from the top, uh, the top, and the chromatite composition, magnesium and chromium, uh, follow the same behavior of the uh, silicates. And so, yeah, we need to, to keep this in mind. And why on the main, um, the, sorry, <clears throat> the main chromatite layer is very enriched in magnesium and a little bit in chromium. So my former student Bettina showed, uh, studied in detail of the chromites and for the middle part of the area. Now I'm studying a little uh, further the, the south. And she here we can see how the main chromatite layer behavior. So it's very massive. And, and, and the behavior of the chromion is almost constant, some more chromiferous in the middle and some more rich, enriched in magnesium, as we will see here. So in the southern area in the equator, we, uh, we now are looking for the textures because uh, previous work, we, we show that we have lots of, oh, Margot, Margot, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, so we have here and um, the button is a more disseminated one and no inclusions at all in this chromites. But when we go further to the center of the, of the thick layer, we can see this these textures that are very interesting textures, lots of inclusions and uh, capped by a ring sometimes, but not always. And so, and the composition goes a little bit uh, enriched in magnesium and chromium is more or less constant. Uh, when you go to the top for the, the main layer, um, again, lots of chromites with uh, uh, these inclusions. And we also have a mixture Sometimes is, uh, the sample has lots of different types and sizes and forms of the chromites is like a mass. But when we, uh, we achieve the top, it's again, um, few inclusions and in more normal type of chromites. Uh, some, uh, perhaps some compactation. I don't know if we, I can say that. And anyway, uh, and so, well, why it's happening? And we'll notice also that the, the chromatize that is under and in the, in the um, layers be, uh, below and the layers upper, the main chromatite layers also uh, has no inclusion. So the inclusion seems to be only abundant in the main chromatite layer and mostly in the middle of the main chromatite layer. <clears throat> Uh, look into the composition uh, for them. It's uh, all published and this, this diagrams here. And we can see that the chain chromatite, uh, I recall here is chain chromatite is this four to 60% chromatite uh, <clears throat> have a different composition in chromium uh, in comparison to the main chromatite layer. Perhaps you have some um, equilibration. That's a concern always. And so the magnesium can show that perhaps that we have some, here is the ratio, magnesium ratio. So it's more rich, enriched than iron, the, the disseminated one. But they are also um, following the same trends of the silicate. So we need to keep this in mind anyway. Uh, it's not resolved. It's just I'm just saying things that uh, I believe it's important. Um, in these diagrams, I took only the the main chromatite uh, massive to compare to to other deposits, and how you can see here, we have a very poor titanium composition. <clears throat> Sorry for the rush, but it, just a short time. And some trace elements that I promise is just uh, the beginning of the work. Um, we have analyzed it for microprobe as well. And so we have more microprobe here, but uh, a few uh, from laser ablation. And so uh, what we can see when we compare the main chromatite layer, the massive is in blue and in red is the lower and upper chromatites. And in yellow is some chromatite associated to sulfide in the north, but from them, I don't have trace elements yet. Uh, here, we see that the chromium is enriched in the main chromatite layer and independent uh, how much uh, chromite, um, chromite we have in, the, in that position. You know, always they are enriched in chromium when compared to lower and upper ultramafic units. So um, this, give me some uh, information that perhaps 
uh, we have another magma or the chromatite is reflecting this massive chromatite is reflecting another pulse or something different that happened and just was um how can i say um intruded in the middle of the like a normal evolution i don't know i'm just uh, thinking about and, and 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 i bring this to reflect with most people that are more um intelligent than me because i i can uh, solve that actually so here uh we see that the behavior uh, this is the same diagram sarajan just uh, showed for us and i use it um the same composition uh the ax37 normalizer to them and i can see that my chromites here are poor in titanium and very poor in gallium and then they follow the same behavior the MCL and the L, uh, that's the lower unit and the main chromatite show the same behavior, but the upper chromatite show a different behavior. And so this may be related to some remobilization. I really don't know. So I removed the, um, the non-massive um, layers to compare with other complexes. And so, well, we are depleted actually in most elements, but we, we kind of follow the same trend, a little bit enriched in nickel. And, but the complex is very primitive. It's have a magnesium very high. And so, and the olefin is very enriched in nickel as well. And we have sulfide nickel deposit or prospect in the, in the north. So yeah, perhaps we have more nickel as well. Um, let me see. I, I, I couldn't see any indicator of crystal contamination clear that I was expecting to see, but unfortunately I don't have uh, other elements and I, I am doing it again, the same samples, trying to, to complete this because the, the paper of Sarajani I saw just before the, uh, after the work. And just to call some attention for, for the inclusions again, uh, lots of inclusions. And sometimes they follow the, the crystallographic axis and they have these rings and we have lots, lots of types of magnesium blend of phlogopite, hydra, hydros minerals, and we have also uh, carbonate. And the carbonate we interpret before like a contamination, perhaps with marbles and other rocks. But um, what is calling my attention now is the the we draw prismatic habits side by side with rounded and side by side with other types of chromites. And so it's like a mixture of different types of chromites in this middle part or the most part of the, the main chromatite layer. But it no, doesn't occur in the other chromatites. So that caught my attention. At least uh, maybe I can find it, but for now it's what I have. Uh, what else? <clears throat> and so, um, my student and I, a couple of years ago, we looked for the brilliant um, papers from Prichard and for my colleague Zoya and others that are here. And so we believe that is it possibly a skeletal. So we had a fast cooling or some super saturated, super saturated magma that crystallized these this crystals and so entrap it. Uh, the, um, the inclusion. And so it tells me that the magma at that point was hydrated um, from the origin, hydrated from the source or contaminated. I really don't know for now. Um, I supposed to be contaminated in situ, but I'm not sure anymore because, well, I'm, I'm thinking why we have no, um, these other chromites without inclusions that are uh, glued and then like chains, yeah, no. So uh, the silicate are incorporated. Uh, I'm finishing, promise. And so the, the last slide is a couple of slides. So we have also looking for some images to, to see um, if uh, we have like uh, some erosion type because it, it looks like an erosion here. And just to, I think this must continue studying this such beautiful things, and we can perhaps um, shed some light in what is happening with the main chromatite layer. And so to wrap up, uh, the paramount magma is uh, primitive, but it's very primitive when passed through the conduit. And so we, we believe that at water or it 
comes with lots of water and mixture of carbonate from the roof. And perhaps it leads to the supersaturation of the xylitol hydrosilicate inclusions. But we don't uh, in, in trap the, the inclusions. Um, and so after that, the, the magma returns to the normal plot. That's the last slide. Just to say that I don't know to explain the, the thickness of the chromite. I believe we have some uh, current chemical evolution that for the in situ crystallization, but I, I really cannot uh, understand how we can form this huge amount of chromite in a magma, keeping the same conditions to form chromite and chromite and chromite while magma is passing through, passing through. I, I cannot, uh, I don't know, I cannot conceive this. And so we, Think about the slurries, and perhaps the skeleton can can give some idea that, uh, like an embryo or something that comes with the magma, and so finish crystallizing in the the place where it is. But I don't know, and so I'm here waiting for trace elements and more thoughts and your help. Thank you very much. Thank you.